there is two types of the movement of the substances across plasma membrane. One is known as passive transport, while the other one is active transport. Okay, what is the differences between passive transport and active transport? Passive transport is the movement of the molecule without using energy, but active transport is the movement of molecule using energy. Why is it? Why is the passive transport without using energy? This is because passive transport is the movement of molecule from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. Wow. For active transport, it is movement of molecules from the region with low concentration to high concentration. So, since simple diffusion, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion are movement of substances without using energy, it is under passive transport. Okay, so now let's talk about simple diffusion. Simple diffusion means that movement of the molecule from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration until equilibrium is achieved. Okay. So there is two molecules. Okay, as we know that this region is known as hydrophobic region. Okay. There is only two molecules that can pass through this region. The first one is known as hydrophobic molecule, such as steroid, vitamin A, D, E, K. Okay? The second molecule that can pass through hydrophobic region is small and untrust molecule such as oxygen or carbon dioxide. So that's all for simple diffusion. So now let's learn about osmosis. Okay, what is semi-permeable membrane means? Semi-permeable membrane means a membrane that allows small size molecule to pass through but prevent large size molecule to pass through. So, from this diagram, this blue color means H2O, while this means solution. Okay, so since semi permeable membrane allows small size molecule to pass through, only H2O can pass through this semi permeable membrane. And osmosis means movement of water molecule from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. Therefore, the water molecule will pass through here from to here. So now let's talk about what will happen if animal cells immerse in the hypotonic solution, isotonic solution, and hypotonic solution. Okay, so what does hypotonic solution mean? Hypotonic solution means the solution which have higher concentration of water molecule while isotonic solution means that it has same concentration of water molecule with the cytoplasm in the animal cell while hypotonic solution means that it has lower concentration of water molecule okay if the red blood cell is immersed in the is immersed in the isotonic solution there is no net movement of water molecule since they have the same concentration of water molecule. Therefore, the red blood cell will remain in the biconcave shape. The red blood cell will remain unchanged. Okay. But for hypotonic solution, if the red blood cell is immersed in the hypotonic solution, since hypotonic solution has more concentration of water molecule, the net movement of water molecule from the hypotonic solution will enter the, into the cytoplasm of the red blood cell. The red blood cell will keep on expanding. Since red blood cell does not have cell wall, therefore when the water diffuses into the red blood cell and causes the red blood cell to be expanded, it will then causes 
lysis to the red blood cell. Lysis in the red blood cell is known as hemolysis. Means that the red blood cell will burst and become like this. Well, for hypertonic solution, the the red blood the hyperton since hypertonic solution has less concentration of water molecule, the water in the cytoplasm of the red blood cell will diffuse out into the hypertonic solution. Then it will become shrinks. It will become smaller and smaller. Lastly, it will become like this. It will become shrink since the water in the animal cell has diffused out of into the hypertonic solution. Crenation of the cell will occur. Okay, so now let's talk about what will happen if the plant cell is immersed in the hypotonic solution or isotonic solution or hypertonic solution. Okay, if it is immersed in the isotonic solutions, since the isotonic solution has the same concentration of water molecule with the cytoplasm in the plant cell, it will there is no net movement of water molecule. Therefore, the plant cell will remain it will remain its shape while if it is immersed in a hypotonic solution the water will enter from the or diffuse from the hypotonic solution into the cytoplasm of the cell when it's enter it will cause the vacuole to be expanded and when the vacuole expands it will push the plasma membrane out and out therefore it will turn to become like this Remember the water will diffuse into the plant cell and causes the vacuole to be expanded. Therefore, it turns to become like this. Okay, and the cell will become turgid. But for a hypertonic solution, the water will diffuse out from the cytoplasm of the plant cell into the hypertonic solution. The vacuole will shrink. And the plasma membrane, since um, in the cytoplasm there is less water molecule, the plasma membrane will pull away from the cell wall. Therefore, it will turn to become like this. Remember, the plasma membrane will pull away from the cell wall and the vacuole will shrink. This is the plasma membrane since it is pulled away from the cell wall while the vacuole will shrink plasmolysis occur and the cell will become flaccid if you want it to turn to become the actual shape this process is known as deplasmolysis what you need to do is just immerse it in the dish gel water
Now let's talk about facilitated diffusion. There is two types of molecules that use facilitated diffusion. The first one is sodium ion or potassium ion. This type of ion use um, pore protein. While the second type is glucose or amino acids. This type of molecule use carrier protein. Facilitated diffusion means that trans, um, transport of molecule or ions from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration without using energy. Okay, for example, in this diagram, this is known as glucose and this is known as carrier protein. The glucose from outside the cell will attach to the carrier protein on the plasma membrane. How do we know it's outside the cell? Because facilitated diffusion means that transport of ion from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. Therefore, the glucose will transport from here to here. Okay. First, the glucose will attach to the cell. Attachment of the carrier protein will cause the um, carrier protein to change its shape. Therefore, it will change its shape. Then, the glucose will detach. And it's transported into the cell without using energy. Okay, that's all for facilitated diffusion. Now let's talk about active transport. Active transport means that transport of molecules against its concentration gradient means that it will transport from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration with by using energy with the help of carrier protein. Okay, um, the molecules can use active transport is calcium ion or mineral ion. Since that active transport is the movement of ion from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration, therefore this region is known as outside the cell because it has less calcium ion compared to inside the cell. Okay, the calcium ion from outside the cell will attach to the carrier protein. Since active transport need to use energy, therefore ATP, which is a form of energy, will be hydrolyzed into ADP and phosphate group. Then the phosphate group will be attached to the carrier protein. The carrier protein then will use the phosphate group, which is the energy, to change its shape. Then, finally, the calcium ion will detach and enter into the cell by using energy. So that's all for active transport.